Wait. Uh, can I can I talk about fonts for a moment before we get going here? Sure. That first font there that said like OSO film. And I'm Mike. <laughs> you were adjusting your mic, and I had to talk about fonts. And um, I'm I'm Ridge. <laughs> and what was that about fonts? And I'm Jay. But look at all these wonderful shots of San Francisco. Uh huh. That were shot in like a two or three days, I think. Oh. And there's there he Tommy. is. This is Tommy Wiseau. Uh, and there's some poor guy who's in the room who looked right at the camera. <laughs> there's another one. <laughs> now he's immortalized in this movie forever, whether he realizes it or not. <laughs> yep. And now we are in the titular room. Get used to it. I, I think the room is supposed to be the bedroom, Jay, where he kill, commits suicide. Spoilers. Are you sure? Is it? I mean, it's it's a metaphorical room. Well, sure. It's, it's the room that we all uh, have our emotions contained in. Oh, is there a point to this movie? <laughs> oh, here's the famous red dress. I, I will say, I just uh, recently rewatched this movie in preparation for The Disaster Artist and for our commentary. And just watching it at home is a much different experience than seeing it in a theater. I never realized until watching it at home how little happens in this movie. The first, like, three, four times, there was a good amount of people. And then I think... I said the the very last time we saw it there was like a hockey game. <laughs> um, that was the time Tommy was so was there, right? I think so. That yeah. was that one was a nightmare. But that last time it was just chaos. It was just drunk people yelling constantly. Right. And That's the thing. It's it's a interesting subculture like the bad movie screening, especially the the twenty four hour B movie thing. Um, we're we're gonna talk about that kind of stuff over the the ten minute long awkward <laughs> sex scene. Um, <laughs> And that first couple of times, you know, you'd have someone yell out something, like, and it would be very funny and smart, and everyone would laugh. There's those people that know when to yell something funny. I think you did it once, Rich. <laughs> I think Do you remember you, what I said? You took your shot, and I want to say it was a bust. Yeah, I might have been. <laughs> I think so. Like, uh, uh, like Samurai Cop, which I, I, I don't think I've watched that movie since we did our interview with Matt Hannon. Because there was that mystery around the movie where it's like, I, I heard they found it in a castle. And then there's like, we <laughs> nobody knows what happened to the guy that plays Samurai Cop. He just vanished. And it's like, oh no, he's a guy. And here's his stories about the making of the movie. And I haven't watched Samurai Cop since. Would would that be the, the ultimate film school assignment? <laughs> to remake the room? Remake the room. Everyone would get an A. <laughs> Immediately. Even the most inept film student would get an A. Because, like, what I'm suggesting is just so easy, you know? You you have, them have you... A, a, a decent relationship, and then, like, Tommy's at work too much. Yeah. Tommy's distracted by this, and she, oh, it's our anniversary date, uh, dinner. I can't make it. I have to be at the at the, the office. Uh, you know, yeah. obvious, obvious stuff. It just immediately starts off with them having sex, and then she's just like, I hate my relationship with him. Yeah, and it, it, the movie would make more sense if... They there was a scene sex. where where Lisa we discover that Lisa is on drugs, that would explain her erratic behavior. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this movie's the equivalent of I'm gonna run away and from home, and boy, they'll sure miss me then. That's yeah. yeah. This movie feels like a like a emo teenager's idea of like, oh man, it would be so so sad if I killed myself. Yeah. Like yeah. Uh, it has that mentality. Of, of like a, yeah, like a small child. It's a movie made by a, a very strange narcissist. Yeah. I mean, it's obvious. <laughs> and you said, like you said, it's sexist. In oh, a way yeah. Because this, I mean, the, the, the Lisa character is like, it's written by someone who has never interacted with a yeah, female. She's just like like a, a monster with no purpose or, yeah. or no um, motivation. Like a woman could leave Johnny for and have a, an affair and still be a good person because she wants to leave. Maybe Johnny's a bad husband right. or future husband. But out here, she's super happy. She's not acting like she's unhappy in the relationship. Right. Well, that's that's the interesting thing about this movie because yeah, all the best bad movies are made by people that are completely oblivious. Uh, and there's maybe no better example than this movie. Uh, but most of the so bad they're good movies, the real famous ones are either action or horror. And this is like a like a melodrama. Yeah, that that that's kind of unique. There, yeah, it, it's completely it stands alone in the world of bad movies. There's nothing else that's like a like a failed melodrama like this. Normally, the narcissist casting themselves as the lead, they're going to be the big action hero. Mm -hmm. Yes, 
Yes. Your uh, uh, Neil Breen. Your uh, get uh, get Getavin. 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 Yeah. Yes. He, he wanted to be the serious actor. Yeah. 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 He wanted to make a dramatic film, even though the box says this is a black comedy. Well, that was yeah. That was an after the fact so, thing. A rewriting of history. <laughs> Has breast cancer too in that scene. <laughs> There's yeah. always a problem. Every time she comes over, she complains about something in her life. Why does even a moron write scenes where just <laughs> the scene is somebody shows up, says a couple of things, then just leaves? <laughs> That's every scene in this movie. I know. And we see them show up and we see them leave. There's so many shots in this movie of people entering and exiting doors. I get the mother character because that's kind of like uh, Juliet Daniel. Juliet. Um, that's kind of what her character doesn't want to become. The mother's very cold, and she's sure. like all about money. And she's like, "You don't just marry Johnny. He's he'll make you financially secure." And blah, blah. yeah, and and Lisa the, wants something more. Lisa wants love. She wants and passion. She wants passion. And so I get that. But then it's like you cut to scenes like this. Like what? What? <laughs> who, these people just show up, and they to, to fucking someone else's around. house. Yeah. What? Are the, what is the payoff for the underwears? Nothing. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's Lisa's friend, but, like, I don't know why they come to Tommy's house. My movie needs scenes. People need to do things in the movie. It's very hard to figure out. The room, it, it's, it symbolizes life. People come in, they leave. Sometimes they're there longer. Comes, sometimes they're they come part back, of and then they leave again. Some, sometimes they're grown men playing children. <laughs> he, he was older than everybody. On, he was, on yeah, the, he was set. older than, than Lisa and, and Mark. Speaking of not knowing the layout, though, of, of this apartment or this building, I, I think it's funny that this, this actual one room is larger than the roof. Is that true? I think it is. The roof's, like, <laughs> comically small, isn't it? It's, it's not very big, yeah. That sheet over the couch <laughs> like was it just did they have the budget to find the ugliest furniture at a thrift store you know what i mean like why oh it looks, speaking of the roof there's the roof this is possibly the best scene in the movie yeah with the best actor in the movie yeah stop ganging up on me <laughs> and then lisa's just like hysterically crying yeah, why, uh, I always like to picture what's going on in the head of an actor in a scene like this. You're not my fucking mother. <laughs> Little boy. Little oh, boy. that poor guy. He's older than her, the grandma. <laughs> and where did they go? They went to chase Chris they R. They were in jail. Yeah, they, yeah. Chris R is going to jail now. They took care of they it. They brought him to jail. Now they're back. <laughs> Isn't that obvious? Yeah, okay. They took him to jail. I'm out. I'm done. Then you get that, that call from Tommy. Don't you oh, just say fuck. no and be relieved that you dodged a bullet? <laughs> well, he has a football on the roof for no reason. Like he's going wanna, to the he's wanna, walking to the left and there's nothing there. I see his head go on the outside of the uh, <laughs> of the roof there. The stairs go down at an eighty nine degree angle. <laughs> <laughs> so be very careful. Here's a scene where you're like, well, thank God they cast an older actor, because if they actually had, like, a 15-year-old talking about how he's in love with, with Johnny's yeah. future wife, it would be incredibly awkward. And uh, uh, mentioning a threesome. <laughs> Can I watch? <laughs> I just like to watch. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, it's the emperor. <laughs> It looks like he just got hit by a bus. Like, wh <laughs> like why? Why does? Why does he look like that? I mean, I'm just mean generally. Sure, no, his, no, his I, hair and his clothes. Well, are what it's I'm so weird. About. Like his energy level changes so much. Like he's like a cat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where it's like, some scenes he looks like he's half asleep. Like here, like he looks like he's just gonna fall asleep in that chair. But then other times he'd be really ener energetic. His his mood swings all all over the place. He kind of acts like someone who's on a lot of, like, painkillers. Yes. And that might be the case. I mean, maybe he has, like, like a fucked up back from his car accident. He's, like, always on, like, Vicodins. And he, he has that slur to him. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. He knows He knows that Tommy has no idea what he's doing. He's just fucking around. Hey, respect that. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> now there, this is where. Oh, this is not the where somebody violently falls down. Just falls oh, no, over is. out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, me underwears gets knocked down. Has to be, like go to the hospital. Or that was something. when they were in the tux. No, no. Oh, no I think it happens now. It's this scene, yeah. The guy with the glasses oh, gets knocked yeah, down. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, he's, uh, who, who like, violently pushes meanderwares down? No one pushes it. He just falls. He's just like, it's like a slight bump, and he's, go oh, on. <laughs> right here. Right here. Ah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just something happened. <laughs> That's the action scene And I don't know movie. why it happened. Because <laughs> it's big drama. Yeah, this, this scene is just ridiculously <laughs> insane. <laughs> He he has a, a tape recorder with a with a cord that can plug into a phone jack so he can monitor phone calls. But and then he just leaves it running for days. A cassette tape will run sixty minutes, <laughs> <laughs> you know, on one side. It's a special cassette tape it's that special. lasts four months. Well, okay. the, well, the room transcends time and space, so we don't know how long it's actually recording for. Or we don't know if it could have... be days. It could be ten minutes. <laughs> oh, here's his story. Remember this? How he met Lisa? Is that it? Like, I oh check. yeah, it's this like complicated thing with an out of state bank. Yeah, yeah. And then he's like, he's like, I have a check, and I don't want to cash it. And then I go to a coffee shop, and it's like it has nothing to do with with meeting her. <laughs> yeah, the the whole out of state bank thing has nothing to do with anything. Oh, yeah. this is why because she paid for dinner, and that's money related. So I guess that's the connection. And then. Oh my god, it's so bizarre. <laughs> Look at him just sitting there staring off at nothing. That was one of those those awkward moments where it's like he probably didn't even know the camera was rolling yet. <laughs> and then there's Denny. And there's a creeper shot of Denny. He just appears. Was he with Lisa or he just happened to show up at the same time? Close the fucking door! <laughs> Why? Someone else is just going to be coming or going any minute now. It doesn't matter. Oh, no, don't don't sit back down there, Denny. Uh, fuck, we got to move the camera. It's it's so Denny has some light on him, I think. <laughs> hey, that's that's a certain oh level God. of thought at least. I think you're right. <laughs> so that's not bad. It's horribly distracting. <laughs> but... It shows that there was some level of thought put into the lighting. Didn't he go outside? <laughs> He's outside. You have to go outside to get on the stairs? <laughs> to get to the roof? Well, we don't know where the front door to their apartment goes to. Does it go to a hallway? Does it go to the entrance to the roof? We have no clue. <laughs> it don't matter. Drama matter. Yeah, yeah, they're right there. <laughs> the roof is 10 by 10 feet. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can see the whole... <laughs> oh, my God! See the whole thing. <laughs> There's barely room for two chairs, a table, and some flowers. <laughs> it's smaller than some people's porch. You don't need to show them ordering. You just have them sitting there in the back. But if we don't show them ordering, how are we going to know how they ordered? He doesn't understand things. <laughs> <laughs> like here, That's the ultimate answer for any question about this movie. It's just, he just doesn't understand things. Like this... The most amazing thing when this guy comes in, <laughs> and he's nobody's seen him before, and here he is moralizing and telling everyone off. <laughs> You're going to hurt Johnny. <laughs> Who are you? He's very sensitive. <laughs> I walked in from the audience. I just got so involved. <laughs> and now, yeah, now she's like, I'm in love with Mark. Like, she's telling this to essentially a stranger from our perspective. Even his tie is comically large. Thomas? <laughs> his suit was tailored for a gorilla. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't, he never pulls his tie up properly. Yeah. Is this all a, a well-planned, <laughs> like everything... fifteen years in the making joke? With the hopes that someday they'll sell the rights to a Hollywood movie producer <laughs> to, uh, James to make Franco. a movie about the making of this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all—it's all just been one long you know, con job. You know who the real director was? Andy Kaufman. Yeah, he's still alive. He's st <laughs> I was going to say the real director of this movie is James Franco, because he's like a weird artsy guy, too. A very, very long play. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Now it cuts to... Uh, uh, oh, I, I guess the party scene is over. No, Mark and Lisa are dancing. Oh, now. no, we're back. 
Is this the same day? Is yeah. this another party? What you should not be slow dancing and kissing <laughs> right I, after it, such an outburst. It makes so little sense. <laughs> and now he comes in back. Well, we in. have to give uh, Johnny motivation to get into a fight with Mark. Oh, again, uh, <laughs> even though they were already in a fight a, a moment earlier. What are you doing here? You're my future wife. Worst birthday party ever. <laughs> Now he finally now has he the finally, evidence. He, he, he has, finally yes. prove it. <laughs> I don't know who he has to prove it to. In the court of law. <laughs> <laughs> He's on the other side of the door, and she's on the phone saying, like, I want your body. <laughs> My God. Do they not have a phone childish. downstairs she could use? It's childish, yes. It's the appropriate so word. childish. Oh, yeah, see, who are you talking to? Nobody. We'll see about that. Like, 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 no! Yeah. You know! She knows you know! Were we, as the audience, supposed to be like, like, oh, he had already put the tape recorder there. Like, yeah. Oh, he got her! Oh, he got her. Well, he, he takes the tape out of the tape recorder so he can put it in another tape recorder. <laughs> to play it back. Well, he took the time to rewind it, too, because it's at the very beginning. Oh, here's where she says she's put up with him for seven years, even though earlier they said five years. Yeah, yeah. That's the room. That's how much time went by. We, <laughs> we, we couldn't figure out, you know, when days ended and began. Apparently, that's, that's this, true. this movie has taken place over two years. <laughs> uh, is that when he signed your DVD? Tommy signed yeah. it, yeah. And we tried to get him to say, you're tearing me apart, George Lucas. So yes, can, you were working on the episode three review. The episode yes, three yes. Review, yeah. <laughs> George Lucas... I know the guy. I can't say that. I know the guy. Yeah. And I said, it's a different George Lucas. It's unrelated. <laughs> How about I say George? He, he was smart enough not to not to go yeah. for it. So then, you know what that means? That means he has some self-awareness. Yeah. Does that go with your theory that this is all a scam? It does. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Like that shot is framed for comedy. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's a flat comedy shot. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> the laziness of the yeah. room trashing. Usually if you're mad, you trash stuff with, with anger. Yeah. It's just like going through the motions of like, oh, I guess uh, I'll knock this over. Well, that's the contradiction. He didn't seem to give a shit, yet he made this movie to stroke his own ego because he thought he could he could do it. He could be the dramatic actor. He, he, he spent $6 million giving himself his own opportunity, <laughs> and then he half-assed it. <laughs> Hollywood don't pay attention to me. I make my own movie. I show them how good I can. Eh. <laughs> uh, I guess I'll knock this over now. I don't remember line. Uh, oh, look, the, he picked up the box and it was open already, so he had to close it so he could open it again. Yes, yes. <laughs> Peter. <laughs> the guy we just met at the party. He kisses him on the, the guy forehead. we just met at the party. <laughs> the doggy from the flower shop scene. Chris R. Chris R. <laughs> Where's, where's my money? <laughs> was that Chris R's gun, just like prop wise? Was it the same gun? I'm just curious. Oh, you know, I don't know. We'll have to, have roll to go it back, back and look at that scene. Probably. That would make sense. We'll go back and check. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> no, it no, was it... not. Oh, damn it, Rich. God damn it. <laughs> I guess that was your bit. I stole it. It's okay. Do it. No, it was not. <laughs> I cut all this out. <laughs> you killed him. Oh, oh uh, but I don't love you. So now they don't even get together. Nope. This is, this is a Greek tragedy. This is it's tragic. It's real, it's real Shakes Hollywood drama. Shakespearean tragedy here. Uh, people would ask questions, and he basically like just showed nothing but contempt and didn't answer any questions. He would, well, he would destroy. He would any question he didn't want to answer, which was most of them. He would just start chanting USA. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's boy. Next question. Where are you from? USA. Yeah. USA. I'm bored with this question. What's next? Yeah. You know, and and people were just shouting things at him, and then he had to run out of the theater. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like for for as funny as the room is, it's almost uh, frustrating. That someone that made it out of pure ego, and the reason it's successful is because it's so terrible. But now it can fuel his, continue to fuel his ego. Yeah, you know, 